My name is O'Neill Jackson. I'm the Interim Chief of Police for Glenn County Police Department. Thank you for being here. Today I will provide updates on our investigation into incidents involved in Trent Limp Camp that occurred on St. Simons Island. I'm thankful, as is the victim and his family, for the hard work of the law enforcement officials that have been involved in this investigation. And with that, I'd like to read a statement that was provided to me by the Camp family. Uh, Trent is transitioning. He's beginning the next step of his care. And we ask that you continue to pray for Trent. The family would like to state that they're in full cooperation with this investigation and the efforts of all the law enforcement officers. They want justice for Trent and hopefully they'll be able to prevent this from happening to anyone else in the future. The investigators have been, that have been involved in this incident have been very, working very diligently on um, collecting evidence, uh, interviewing subjects, and at this point in time, we've identified all individuals that were involved in the video as well as the photograph of the victim uh, sitting in the chair. That took a lot of time. We've collected a lot of evidence that the Georgia Bureau of Investigation is going to be helping us analyze. We've also looked at other aspects of this case. <clears throat> As of today, investigators with the Glen County Police Department and the Georgia Bureau of Investigations continue to look into social media posts that have been supplied to the office while we do appreciate the information provided by this source, there has been some misinformation that has spread via this medium as well, some of which to include the misidentification of individuals that were not involved in this incident, which has uh, affected many families here in our local community. The misinformation that's provided via social media can hamper an investigation because we, tr we will follow up on every lead that we receive, no matter where it comes from, which means that the investigator is drawn from other assignments of critical information of importance to this investigation to further it by following false leads. Like I said earlier, currently forensic analysis is being conducted on the devices collected as well as information that we received from search warrants. That information as well as evidence is being sent off to be analyzed by the GBI lab. This isn't going to be an overnight investigation. Uh, the incident occurred on uh, Tuesday. It was reported to us and here we are over a week later and we're still investigating. If we could just make a case off of one single photo or one single video without getting any other type of evidence, then that would not be a proper, that would not be a thorough investigation. And in this investigation, we owe it to this victim and to his family to make sure we get it right. Uh, if a picture could say a thousand words, then the thousand words that that picture would say was that's a horrible incident that occurred, that what that victim went through. We can't rush to judgment. We have to take our time on this, and that's what we're doing. In our society, we should have a zero tolerance for bullying and the mistreatment of others. That goes for any student, that goes for any parent, that goes for any adult. And all I could ask is that when you see something, you have to say something. Um, a lot of this incident was revealed via social media uh, there are a lot of juveniles that were at both of these incidents and nothing was spoken when they were occurring. So I would ask that folks not be afraid to speak up. This, may, this incident may not have even been reported if uh, the victim didn't end up in the hospital, which is really sad. <clears throat> I want to thank all of our law enforcement partners that have assisted us in this matter today. The Georgia Bureau of Investigations, our district attorney's office, uh, the Glenn County School Police, as well as the, the Federal Bureau of Investigations. Um, that's all I have to say. Are you open to the question? people whose home this took place at, would they be responsible for anything? Would they possibly be facing criminal charges as well? 
So we're not uh, taking anything off the table. We're looking at this from this investigation from a holistic point of view. Uh, not only uh, the parents uh, that the home that this occurred in, but we're also looking into uh, where the alcohol was obtained from, um, as well as any type of narcotics. Uh, we also know that this has been named a hazing investigation by your department. Originally logged as an assault call when it was put into the CAS system for your dispatchers, and then named a hazing incident in a press release from you all. Uh, according to our legal experts, this case doesn't fit the Georgia law for hazing. Is this still a hazing investigation? This, I, I would agree with you, this does not meet Georgia code for hazing uh, because it doesn't involve a public, um, public school event or an organization that's related to a school. Our victim was an adult, as, you, as you're aware. Uh, the individuals uh, that are involved in this, the other individuals that are involved in this thing are juveniles, so it would not rise to that definition, I agree. And do you see yourself as an agency arresting this, or do you believe that this will be the case presented to the grand jury? We're going to collect the facts. That's our job. After we collect all the facts, then we'll consult with the district attorney's office, and we'll allow, allow him to make that determination. Have you had another call to that house previously before this, any sort of other incidents? No incidents of this magnitude or of this nature. Uh, we had a total of about 10 calls, I believe it was, from uh, August or September of 2022 until uh, a couple of days after the event. A lot of the calls that we had there revolved around or centered after this incident of officers going by doing neighborhood patrols and things of that sort. Chief, was there a parent home while the drinking was taking place? We're still investigating wh wh where, that, where we are on that. There have been a number of threats that have been issued to a number of, there's been a list of families that are, may or may not be involved in this, not officially confirmed. Uh, I understand there have been some threats towards members of those families. Is that also being investigated? We are going to look into that before I came into the, well, I'm, I am aware of other mis folks that are misidentified that had nothing to do with this investigation. Uh, we will be looking into that if they make a complaint to our office. Have you all looked further into um, the police report states that the father, Trey's father, um, told police that Trey had been to the hospital just prior to that incident for a laceration over his eye and some other concerns that he had. Is that something that you all are taking part in this investigation as well? We're, we're looking at the whole combination of things, not just the incident with him sitting in the chair or the incident where he's being water, a water hose is being used on him, but one of the things that we have to do is go back and re-interview our victim, right? Uh, we just recently had an opportunity to interview him for, for the first time back on Sunday. Um, at that point in time, obviously, uh, he was still being treated at a hospital, uh, so we need to go back and re-interview him. Chief, that picture of him in the chair and the video of him being hosed, are, are those two separate nights? That is what, that is correct. And the video of him being hosed, is that the night that the dad mentioned that he I don't know if we've nailed that part down, but we do, we have confirmed that there that those were two different nights or two different incidents. Chief, just as happening in your community, the fact that it is so raw and I guess has so many people upset to see this, hear what happened as a member of this community, not just the police chief. What do you say to people who are looking now at Glen County from across the country and saying, look what happened there? It's a uh, sad and misfortune. Uh, event. Um, I, I want uh, the rest of America, if you will, and from across uh, the pond to understand that we are, we, the citizens of Glen County, are mostly um, very good people, hardworking people. Uh, this is an isolated incident, um, and don't judge Glen County by one group of juvenile teens. You said you identified all the individuals involved in the video and photos. How many individuals have you identified with that effort? So in um, the hosing incident, water hose incident, I believe there were 11 juveniles. Um, in the second incident, there were nine juveniles. Obviously in, what do you call it? Um, some of those are duplicates, uh, or some of the individuals are at both incidents. Are there any possible charges that they could face as of now? We're still working through that. As of those people you identified, the 11 and the 9, are all of them juveniles or some of them over the age of, I guess you would say, of over the age of being considered adults? None of the individuals um, that we've identified have 
would rise to that level. They were. Chief, just to clear up a misconception that's online, and I apologize if you already answered this and I missed this, but a lot of people were posting that the victim was on the spectrum or you know had a mental disability. Is that something that's true? I just want to see if you can fact check it. So we have interviewed the victim as well as his family. There is no uh, information that we've been provided to support that claim. Okay. Thank you. Chief, has the family expressed any interest in wanting to press charges at this point? They are fully cooperative with this investigation. What are some of the charges? If they were to be charged, what would they look like? What would they be charged with? What would the investigation continue to look like? I, I don't want to speculate on that. I want the facts to point where the facts show. And uh, in consul consultation with the district attorney's office, we'll determine where we have um, enough probable cause for to support a charge that's not only chargeable, or but it's also uh, prosecutable and it's winnable. All right, I'm going to, we've only got time for two more questions. He's a busy man and we've got to go. We have a lot of things to take care of. Can, can you tell us how many search warrants have been executed and in how many locations? I, I think that weighs too much, uh, provides too much information in regards to the investigation. I'm not going to release that at this time. Chief, just regarding that, because I think you probably would like to let people in this community know you are here to speak to them and answer their questions about this and aren't too busy to do that. Um, would you say to those people, especially those hundreds that gathered at that vigil um, the other night, the DA's office is asking for patience here, but they remember another case here where it took 74 days for someone to be arrested. What do you say to the people in this community that are so upset that this took days to come out into the public and now we're a week later and they say that the arrest is overdue? This, this, this event took days to come out into the public out of respect for the victim's privacy. Uh, we looked at that. It was requested of us. And uh, this was an incident that was isolated that we believe that we um, had no other public threat going on. Is there any surveillance video? Is there surveillance? From, surve from the hospital? Yes, there is. Is there, is there clarity to it or is that? I have not viewed it personally. The investigators are working with that, working with the hospital staff on that. That video has already obviously circulated social media. Um, is that something that you all, as the police department, plan to release on your behalf? Or is that something that? I missed your question. The video of social media has already circulated, has already circulated on social media, the video of Trenton being water closed. Is that something that you all, as the police department, um, plan to release from the department itself? Once we can, I mean, obviously, like you said, it's in the, in the public forum on social media, but we're going to retain what we have here. Chief, all these kids went to Glen Academy. Are you going to be working with the school at all on trying to address this kind of behavior? We've uh, been working with uh, Chief Rod Ellis with the school school police on this investigation. Um, that will be up to the school as far as what type of actions they take. All right. Thank you, Thank you all, all very much.